I'm Christian, and welcome to the Jamoir Leadership Podcast, a show where we talk about effective collaboration, influence, and leadership in an increasingly complex world. My interview partner is Dr. Dirk Schlimm. Dirk is an international leadership expert and the author of Influencing Powerful People. The purpose of this podcast is to share ideas and stimulate discussion, and it does not constitute professional advice of any kind. If such advice is needed, the services of a competent professional should be sought. The speakers, host, and Gemar International Incorporated are not to be held responsible for any use, misuse, or reuse of the content. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Gemoir Leadership Podcast. We are so pleased to be here for a bit of an informal conversation with Dirk and I. Dirk and I, we just had on Gerardo Kiaia for a two-part interview series where we got into some fascinating conversations. So, Dirk, before we dive into our, our, our thoughts really here, just give us an overview. How would you feel about that conversation? Was it amazing or was that just me? Uh, so I thought it was uh, fantastic. I've known Gerardo for for a long time and uh, have followed his career, have uh, uh, worked with him. So it was super uh, to have him on uh, uh, on the on the show. Uh, but Christian, I know from our listener feedback, as much as people you know put up with me going on, uh, what they're really looking for right now is your summary. I hear that all the time. People love Christian's summary at the end. So uh, why don't I give it back to you and? You tell us what, what what you took away from our conversation with uh, Gerardo. Yeah, Dirk, happy to. Pre- pressure's on for me. I know I know people like hearing my thoughts, but as always, uh, I made sure to take a lot of notes. Um, that's something I find with all of our guests, and of course with you as well, Dirk. Uh, so much information for no matter where you are in your career or even field, and I think I'm a I'm an example of that. So happy to share. Maybe I'll share three big things I took away. And Dirk, we did a bit of chatting beforehand. I know you also have some uh, two or three things you'd like to share. So I'll share mine. Three big takeaways. I think overall with Gerardo, something that really stuck out to me uh, more than specific details was just how we spoke of a leader's character and the different traits they ought to possess or if they don't possess them that they should seek to develop or surround themselves with. So the the first one, of course, and I mentioned it uh, in our interview at the end, but uh um, that story uh, with his time in in China and just that that experience of having to to sit in uh, sit in the client's waiting room for hours upon hours on end and not just one day I believe it was a couple of days if I'm remembering correctly and uh, Gerardo brought that story up as an example of how a leader has to really uh, embrace the virtues of perseverance and and just resilience in leadership roles. And I think more than how that story illustrated where perseverance and resilience are necessary for leaders, what stuck out to me was the nature of that perseverance, where when I imagine a a person persevering, you often imagine someone who keeps pestering or keeps uh, barking until they get what they want. But with Gerardo and his story, he demonstrated two things. First of all, that perseverance and resilience, it goes hand in hand with humility, where in this case, in order to keep the client, the moral of the story or the example of the story wasn't to, to keep pestering, wasn't to keep calling, wasn't to keep sending emails. It was to humbly sit in a waiting room for hours upon end and just wait and sit there with, you can imagine, a cap between your hands. And there was a, it was quite a story, but the emphasis there was embracing that posture of humility and being resilient and persevering in the humble state and then eventually it came through. So I think that was something powerful that stuck with me as a leader resilience. It is tied with humility, which might not be a natural thought when it comes to a leader. We might think to to be doggedly determined or aggressive even, but no, that humility was something I got from Gerardo. But in addition to that, Gerardo mentioned how he wasn't alone there. Dirk, you knew all the characters. It was my first time really hearing that story. Uh, But Gerardo was there with some people where he was their leader. He was um, their boss above them. And he was sitting there and waiting with those people. And something that that communicated to me as well as being resilient and being someone who persevered with that humble attitude, it was also a teachable moment where even in a situation where uh, you think that's the time when you don't want eyes on you, I think Gerardo, what he was getting at there was 
that's a great time to have eyes on you. You model how to act in that situation. You teach people who are around you how to act. And they learn something about you and something about your character in addition to ways that they might uh, better their own leadership skills. So, Derek, any any thoughts you want to add on there? Well, actually, I uh, had the opportunity to speak to the people who were sitting there uh, with, with, with uh, Gerardo. And yeah. uh, they told me that story uh, from their vantage point and how much uh, they learned from that and how they much how, how much they appreciated and learned about uh, leadership and perseverance and and humility at that moment so it is a great a great story so that's wonderful a fantastic first point here christian okay i'm glad that stuck with me it might be a story i end up sharing i know a story of this time yeah wonderful so i think the second thing that stuck out to me and i have two points from this and it comes from both gerardo's content but then also getting to know him a little bit that whole idea of being your authentic self as a leader. So I think Gerardo, just what came out in his content was he is a genuinely nice guy, but also a very effective leader where that's a reality of him being his authentic self. And the example he brought up, of course, was his accent where, and accents in general, where you might be going to another country or uh, other people from other countries might be joining you, different cultures, different languages, and people will have different accents. That's very common. But that's not something we need to shy away from or hide from having a, a different accent. But even if we have that different accent, we still have a responsibility to learn the lingo, to know what we're talking about, and really bring that balance of, hey, I want to be who I am, but I still want to be effective in my role. And the reason why that really stuck with me is I'm at the stage in my career, and many people know this, I'm in academics, I'm doing my PhD, but near the end of my PhD, I'm also TA in courses as a teaching assistant for students who are in their master's program. So sometimes they're older than me, but I'm also now an adjunct professor where I'm teaching my own course and I am a professor. And the reality is if people see my picture, I can look a bit on the younger side. And that of course leads to interesting conversations, but in the classroom, I find that this is something where I really need to apply it. I I am on the younger side being a professor especially in a in a in a in a program where I'm teaching history or English, but the reality is I can bring that younger energy to a classroom with the examples I use with how I carry myself, maybe even how I dress in certain situations. But at the end of the day, while that's being my authentic self, I still want to be an effective professor. That means embracing the role. That means setting certain expectations, enforcing certain standards, being direct with my feedback at times. And that was the balance I really think Gerardo nailed well. You want to be your authentic self, but still be authentic in your role. So being yourself, but also being an effective leader. And as one further example, I could bring teaching an English course where the thrust of my my teaching this past semester has been how to be an effective writer, especially in final papers, essays, work, uh, research programs. Uh, an idea I have to communicate to students is finding your academic voice. And the whole point, which Gerardo put so succinctly, but I've been teaching over the course of many lectures, so I'll have to use some of that information, is being your authentic self, but also still being an effective academic communicator. So the example that I gave my students, which I think fits well, you might dress a certain way, carry yourself in a certain way, you might have a certain style, but if you were meeting the King of England, you would probably put on a suit, even if that's not something you would normally wear. You could still be your authentic self, but when you're meeting the King of England, you're going to act in a certain way. So if you're a nice guy in your life, in your regular life, maybe you like to crack jokes and have a good time, that still doesn't excuse you from being an effective leader. Maybe you have to throw on the suit, set the direction, set the tone, set the vision, and be effective in that way. So... That was my second point, but I'll briefly mention my third, Dirk. I'll just keep rambling on here with the third point. And I think this is one that we we might have an insider info to since we both have, well, you know Gerardo for a long time. I've had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times uh, personally and seeing him and getting to know him, not as a leader, but just as that really nice guy that I think came across in the podcast. But something people might not realize from the short interview that we were able to, to air, Dirk and I, of course, were able to chat with Gerardo beforehand is that he is a truly funny guy. He is a nice guy. He's a funny guy. But when you're talking to him, it's amazing when it was time to get down to business and talk about leadership, just as naturally, he was going from joking to talking about being an effective leader on this podcast 
And being able to list examples and be a communicator and bring and share so much wisdom. So I think thinking back on that interview, what was most powerful, and of course, I wish everyone could see this, is not only what Gerardo said in the interview, but also how he demonstrates that even in a small hour-long interaction, just being who you are, but then still being effective at what you do, especially as a leader, especially as an example. So Dirk, those are my thoughts, my big takeaways. Do you have any thoughts there? Yeah, uh, Christian, Christian, I do. And and again, this this idea of uh, we're in an English speaking world and everybody is, uh, at least in, in this part, uh, almost anywhere in the world, in international business, uh, people speak English and that puts uh, second language speakers a bit at a disadvantage sometimes and yep. people are self-conscious. And so that to me was such a key message from Gerardo. Don't be who you are. And at the same time, uh, of course, adopt the persona and and combine those two things. And Gerardo does that extremely well. And I thought, Christian, your your example was was good. I'm not trying to pretend to be a tenured professor and put on airs or anything like this. That 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 will not fly. Um, so I am who I am, but I'm adopting the appropriate persona in this moment, and that applies to the persona sometimes, and that applies to the situation. We we can have a, a good time here, uh, likability is always uh, helpful, uh, but when we get down uh, to business, we're dealing with a serious matter, we can be just as serious. So, so have that range, that repertoire of being likable and personable here, and, and sometimes uh, a bit more authoritative if the situation um, calls, calls for it. And just building on that, Dirk, I, I know that you had a, a great time chatting with Gerardo, and I know a number of things stuck with you, as I mentioned, chatting before. I think this would be a good time to hand it over to you. What were two or three things that you really took away from our time with Gerardo? Yeah, so, and Christian, it just so happens I also have three points. Oh, uh, there you go. Three. Perfect. There you go. There yep. you go. Three points. First one to me, uh, again, with, I believe, truly universal application is um, Gerardo's career story. He started as a service technician. And so he's, he's, he's a CEO. He's the CEO of uh, Logo Plaster. He had very uh, senior positions uh, before that. So he's a global CEO, but he's a global CEO who started as a uh, service technician. And and that just shows uh, leadership starts with some level of domain knowledge. You don't go to leadership school and then leadership is not an entry position. Uh, leadership starts somewhere. And the best way to start is with a solid domain knowledge that could be in engineering and finance and marketing in law, what, whatever the case may be, you you bring that and you bring that to an entry level job. And and Gerardo started out as a service tech, and he he understood the product, he understood customers, what customers value, and that then that became the basis to to leadership. And so uh, I think um, if if people looked at the entry level jobs as the hey, this is my first rung in the ladder to CEO, then then these things become so much more uh, meaningful. And I think. Great, great, great example um, of that. So that's uh, my first point. Um, my my second point was that story where you had that outside expert from yeah. the automotive industry. So so remember the the industry uh, that he was in was packaging, uh, medical packaging. They wanted to expand the product line uh, to automotive, and the automotive market just you know is is a very different market. And so he brought this this, this uh, gentleman um, in and it didn't mesh with the team and th they had concerns and say, it's not a good fit here, but it wasn't that the person wasn't a good fit. You are deciding to enter a different market with different customer, with different customer expectations. You are the problem. And, and, and again, I, I love Gerardo's authenticity where he initially was siding, so to speak, with the internal perceptions. Yeah, this guy is not a fit, but then he had the wisdom uh, to go to a mentor office, somebody on the board explained the situation. And that person, you know, totally turned this perspective around and saying it's up to you to bring this person in and avail yourself uh, of of uh, his his knowledge, uh, because otherwise you cannot succeed in that new new market that you're trying to enter. And and because that market has certain laws and and certain requirements. And you cannot you cannot change that as a, as a new entrant. And so the ability to incorporate 
people from the outside, different perspectives, make them part of your leadership team. Uh, I thought it was a great example uh, of that. Again, application uh, way beyond uh, the discussion that, um, that, that we had. And then the third one, um, and I got feedback on this, we got feedback on this, um, is the discussion on sustainability, right? And, and how uh, the big topics of our time um, and and this could be demographic uh, challenges, geopolitical uh, turmoil, uh, or or you know, uh, climate change and sustainability. Those things, if you are a leader, they very often, almost always, will have an impact on your business. And you need to understand how to position your business in that context. You need to be very articulate uh, about these things. You you, you gotta gotta speak to all kind of stakeholders. Uh, throughout the industries, people, activists, people may be criticizing you, shareholders who have concerns. So, so you need to be an effective uh, a spokesperson on the big issues um, of, of, of our time. And you need to be, uh, to use that word, a bit of a thought leader. And that's certainly who uh, Gerardo is. He's very eloquent uh, on those topics. And, and so that would be my third point is understand the big context of your business in the world that we live in. This could be, you know, artificial intelligence. What do you think about that? Um, and, and all kinds of things that relate to your industry. And you need to have an opinion on this, a point of view on this. You need to be able to speak on this expertly. And Gerardo certainly did that. So, so that would be my, uh, that would be my third point, uh, third point here. Sure. Those are fantastic points. And as you were listening to them again, I'm realizing, yeah, those are all things that I really need to remember and embrace and things I think it's worth hearing again for all of our audience. So Dirk, thank you for sharing those. And thank you for listening to mine. I think through our three and three points, perfect through those six points, I think we, we definitely gave an uh, effective summary, I hope, of some of the key points that Gerardo came up. But of course, if people are listening to this and they haven't tuned into those interviews uh, please go back into your whatever podcast catcher you're using or on YouTube. Listen to those interviews, those two part, that two part series with Gerardo. It is definitely worth your time. And I hope that this was a, a good teaser for that if you haven't heard it. But if you have, we hope that this was great to think more about those points. And as always, that's something Dirk and I, that's what we're here to do. We're here to chat. We're here to learn and we're here to share. But as always, we want this to be a conversation with our audience as well. So just want to let you know that if you want to share your thoughts, if you have any feedback, we would love for you to get in touch with us. And we really mean that. So please, if you have anything to share, ideas, questions, comments of any kind, send us an email. That's podcast at gemoir.com, podcast at gemoir.com. Send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Join in the conversation. But Dirk, that's all our time together. This has been an informal conversation. Dirk, any final words from you? Or are you doing good? I'm doing well, Christian. Thank you so much. All right. Perfect, Dirk. I'm doing well, too. But that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in to the Shemar Leadership Podcast. Hope to have you again soon with, we hope, another amazing interview. Until then, take care. Bye.